Dust motes danced in the faint beam of sunlight that pierced the attic's gloom, illuminating a world of forgotten memories and whispered secrets. The old house, a creaking testament to time's relentless passage, seemed to sigh around me, its wooden bones settling, its shadows deepening as the storm clouds gathered on the horizon. The scent of rain hung heavy in the air, a blend of damp earth and ozone, a prelude to the symphony of wind and water that was about to be unleashed upon the small town of Marlow. I, Nathan, stood amidst a chaos of boxes and forgotten furniture, the remnants of a life I had inherited but barely understood. My grandfather, a man of few words and many secrets, had passed away a few weeks ago, leaving behind a void in my life that mirrored the emptiness of this rambling old house. He'd been a solitary man, a collector of oddities, his house a testament to a life spent exploring the world's forgotten corners, seeking treasures both tangible and intangible, his stories fueling my childhood imagination with tales of lost cities, ancient curses, and mysteries that defied explanation. And now, amidst the clutter of his attic, I had stumbled upon a legacy, a key to a secret that had haunted my grandfather's dreams, a mystery that now beckoned me, whispering promises of adventure and unsettling truths. It was a map, tucked away in a hidden compartment beneath a loose floorboard, its surface worn and faded, its lines tracing a path through a labyrinth of symbols and cryptic notations. I unfurled the map on a dust-covered table, its parchment crackling like a whispered warning, its ink a faded echo of a past I had never known. The map, unlike any I had ever seen, depicted a landscape that defied geography, a world of twisting tunnels and hidden chambers, its borders marked by archaic symbols that seemed to writhe and contort as I traced their contours with my fingertips. A shiver ran down my spine, a prickle of excitement mingled with a primal unease. This map, a relic of my grandfather's secret world, was more than just a cartographic curiosity. It was a gateway, an invitation, to a place beyond imagination, a place whispered about in local legends, a place known as the Whispering Labyrinth. The town of Marlow, nestled amidst rolling hills and whispering forests, was a place where the past lingered, where stories were passed down through generations, where the line between reality and folklore blurred. My grandfather, a man who had always seemed more at home in the wilderness than in the confines of civilization, had often spoken of the whispering labyrinth, his voice a hushed whisper, his eyes gleaming with a mixture of fear and fascination. It's a place of power, Nathan, he'd say, his gaze fixed on the distant hills, his words a haunting echo in my memories. A place where the veil is thin, where the whispers of the ancients can still be heard. A place best left undisturbed. But curiosity, a thirst for adventure that had always pulsed within me, now burned with a newfound intensity. I had to see it for myself, the whispering labyrinth, the place that had haunted my grandfather's dreams, the secret he had guarded so closely. I called my friend Isabella, a skilled cartographer whose love of maps and mysteries mirrored my own. Izzy, you won't believe what I've found, I said, my voice a breathless whisper, my excitement bubbling over. A map, I continued, my gaze fixed on the cryptic symbols that seemed to dance and writhe before my eyes. An old map from my grandfather's attic. It leads to a place called the Whispering Labyrinth. A silence, a crackle of static over the phone line, was followed by Izzy's voice, a mixture of amusement and skepticism. The Whispering Labyrinth? You're kidding, right? That's just an old wives' tale, a local legend. Maybe, I replied, my fingers tracing the map's intricate lines, its energy a palpable hum beneath my touch. But there's something about this map, Izzy. It feels... real. It feels... dangerous. And as I spoke, the first drops of rain began to fall, a gentle patter against the attic windows, a symphony of sound that mirrored the whispers swirling in my mind, a chorus of voices that seemed to urge me onward, towards the heart of the mystery, towards the depths of the unknown. 
The rain intensified, its rhythm echoing the growing excitement, the unease that thrummed through me. I traced the lines of the map, the ink blurring slightly under my damp fingertips. The symbols, once abstract and meaningless, were starting to whisper secrets, to hint at a language, a code that beckoned me towards the unknown. Izzy arrived the next morning, her usual skeptical grin replaced by a frown of concentration as she examined the map spread out on my study table. This is unusual, Nathan, she said, her fingers tracing the faded lines, her gaze lingering on the cryptic symbols. The cartography is archaic, but the symbols, I've never seen anything like them. She pulled out a magnifying glass from her bag, her eyes narrowing as she examined the map more closely. The parchment is old, possibly centuries old, she muttered. But the ink, it's fresh, as if it was drawn recently. A chill ran down my spine. My grandfather's warnings, the local legends, the whispers I'd heard in the attic. It was all starting to feel real. There's more, I said, pointing to a small, leather-bound journal tucked beneath the map. I found this in the same compartment. It's a diary, I think. But the language... I trailed off, remembering the spidery script, the unsettling drawings, the sense of dread that had emanated from its pages. Izzy, her curiosity piqued, took the journal, her brow furrowing as she flipped through its pages. It's a cipher, she said, her voice a hushed whisper. A complex one. But I think... I think I can crack it. We spent the next few days hunched over the map and the journal, deciphering its secrets, piecing together the puzzle of my grandfather's legacy. The rain continued, a relentless deluge that mirrored our growing obsession, the mystery of the whispering labyrinth consuming our thoughts, our conversations, our dreams. Izzy, her initial skepticism giving way to a reluctant fascination, worked tirelessly her knowledge of ancient languages and codes proving invaluable. She managed to crack the cipher, revealing a journal that belonged to my ancestor, Lucian, a man who had lived centuries ago, a man whose thirst for adventure had led him to the very cave depicted on the map. Lucian's entries were a mix of meticulous observations and increasingly frantic ramblings, a testament to the cave's power, its ability to warp the mind, to blur the lines between reality and nightmare. The cave, it's a labyrinth, he wrote, his handwriting shaky, the ink blotted as if with tears. A living, breathing entity, its darkness a shroud that conceals ancient secrets and unspeakable horrors. I hear whispers in the shadows, feel the weight of unseen eyes upon me. The air is thick with a scent of decay, of fear, of something ancient and malevolent. He spoke of strange creatures, of shifting walls, of traps that defied logic and reason. And he warned of a guardian, a being of immense power that protected the cave's heart, its presence a chilling reminder of the dangers that awaited those who dared to trespass. The guardian, it's not of this world, he wrote, his words a frantic scrawl. It feeds on fear, on curiosity, on the very essence of the human soul. It tests those who enter, challenges their sanity, their courage, and those who fail are lost forever, consumed by the darkness. As we delve deeper into Lucian's journal, a sense of dread, a premonition of the horrors that awaited us, settled upon us, chilling the air, amplifying the whispers that now seemed to emanate from the very walls of my grandfather's house. And then, one evening, as the rain lashed against the windows, a knock on the door shattered the silence, a jarring intrusion into the world we had built around the map, the diary, the mystery that consumed us. I opened the door, the wind whipping a spray of cold rain into my face, and found a man standing on the porch, his silhouette tall and imposing, his features obscured by the shadows of his wide-brimmed hat. Dr. Calder, I presume? I said, recognizing the man from his reputation a renowned archaeologist whose methods were often as controversial as his discoveries. He nodded, a curt smile playing on his lips, his eyes piercing and intelligent, 
assessing me with a swift, calculating glance. I believe you have something that belongs to me, he said, his voice a low, cultured rumble. Something that I've been searching for for a very long time. He stepped into the house, his presence a sudden weight in the room, the air around him buzzing with an energy that sent shivers down my spine. And as his gaze fell upon the map, spread out on the table, his eyes narrowed, a flicker of greed and a chilling determination burning in their depths. Dr. Calder's presence filled the room, a weight that pressed down on us, a palpable tension that seemed to crackle in the air. He moved with a practiced grace, his gaze sweeping across the clutter of maps, books, and artifacts that littered my study, his eyes lingering on the map spread out on the table, its cryptic symbols a beacon in the lamplight. You haven't told me how you knew about the map, Doctor, I said, my voice cautious, my hand instinctively hovering near the journal tucked beneath my arm. Word travels fast in certain circles, Nathan, he replied, his smile a thin, predatory line that didn't reach his eyes, especially when it concerns artifacts of such historical significance. He reached out a gloved hand, his fingers tracing the map's faded lines, his touch sending a shiver down my spine. This map, he said, his voice a low, cultured rumble that seemed to vibrate the very air around us. It's not just a relic of the past. It's a key, a gateway to a place of unimaginable power, a place that I've been searching for for many years. He glanced at me, his eyes narrowed, his gaze piercing, his words a veiled threat. You see, Nathan, he continued, his voice softening, a deceptive calmness that belied the hunger burning in his eyes. This map, it rightfully belongs to me. It was stolen from my family generations ago by your ancestor, Lucien. He took a step closer, his presence a predator's shadow looming over me. I've devoted my life to finding this cave, he whispered, his voice a venomous hiss, to unlocking its secrets. And now, thanks to you, I'm finally close. I stepped back, my hand tightening on the journal, its worn leather cover a flimsy shield against the fear that coiled in my gut. My grandfather, he never mentioned you, I said, my voice a shaky defiance against the man's palpable menace. He said the map, it was a family heirloom, passed down through generations. Calder laughed, a dry, brittle sound that echoed through the room. Your grandfather was a fool, Nathan, he said, his voice dripping with contempt. He was blinded by sentiment, by fear. He didn't understand the true significance of the map, the power it held, the secrets it guarded. He stepped closer, his gaze fixed on mine, his words a hypnotic spell that threatened to unravel my resolve. Let me help you, Nathan, he whispered, his voice a seductive murmur. Let me guide you. Together we can unlock the secrets of the Whispering Labyrinth. We can claim its power for ourselves. But even as his words tempted me, the whispers in the house intensified, a chorus of warnings that echoed my grandfather's voice, his tales of ancient curses, of knowledge too dangerous to possess, of the price that came with seeking forbidden truths. Don't trust him. He seeks to control. He will betray. Beware the darkness. I glanced at Izzy, her face pale, her eyes wide with fear, her hand instinctively reaching for the silver crucifix she always wore around her neck, a talisman against the unseen forces that now seemed to gather in the shadows of my grandfather's house. We, we can't do this alone, Nathan, she whispered, her voice trembling. This map, this cave, it's too dangerous. But I, driven by a thirst for adventure, a need to unravel the mystery, to prove myself worthy of my grandfather's legacy. Ignored her warnings. The whispers, please. We'll be careful, Izzy, I said, forcing a confidence I didn't feel. We'll stick together. We'll be fine. I turned back to Dr. Calder, his smile widening, his eyes gleaming with a predatory hunger, and with a nod, a gesture of agreement that sealed our fates. We embarked on a journey into the heart of darkness, towards a place beyond imagination, 
towards the depths of the whispering labyrinth. The forest surrounding Marlow seemed to press in on us, a wall of green and shadow that mirrored the growing unease in my heart. The whispers, a constant presence since the discovery of the map, had intensified, their voices a dissonant chorus that seemed to emanate from the very trees that lined the winding dirt road. Dr. Calder, his gaze fixed on the map spread out on his lap, ignored the whispers, his focus laser sharp, his ambition a palpable force that radiated from him like heat from a fire. The symbols, he muttered, his fingers tracing the map's faded lines. They represent a language, an ancient code that unlocks the cave's secrets. I've spent years deciphering them, piecing together the fragments of knowledge passed down through generations. He glanced at Izzy, who sat beside me in the back seat. Her eyes narrowed as she examined the map, her skepticism battling against a growing sense of awe. Your ancestor, Lucian, Calder continued, his voice a low, cultured rumble. He was a brilliant man, a scholar of the arcane, a seeker of forbidden knowledge. But he was also... reckless. He underestimated the cave's power, its ability to... corrupt. A shiver ran down my spine, Calder's words echoing the warnings in Lucian's diary, the whispers that swirled around us, the unsettling occurrences that had plagued us since our journey began. We had left Marlow under the cloak of darkness, the rain a relentless curtain that obscured the road, the headlights cutting through the gloom, illuminating fleeting glimpses of the forest, its trees twisted and gnarled as if in pain, their branches reaching towards us like grasping claws. We had encountered strange phenomena along the way, fleeting shadows that danced at the edges of our vision, whispers that seemed to emanate from the very air itself, the scent of lavender and decay intensifying, a cloying sweetness that mingled with the metallic tang of blood, a cocktail of odors that hinted at a darkness far older, far more insidious than anything I had ever imagined. Izzy, despite her initial skepticism, her logical mind seeking rational explanations for the unsettling events had grown increasingly uneasy. This map, it's like a magnet for the strange, she'd muttered, her voice a hushed whisper as she traced the map's lines, her gaze lingering on the cryptic symbols. It's as if, as if it's drawing the darkness to us. Her words had echoed the warnings in Lucian's journal, his desperate pleas for caution, his regrets for having disturbed the cave's slumber, for having unleashed a power he couldn't control. The Guardian, it feeds on fear, Lucian had written, his words a chilling prophecy. It tests the hearts of those who enter its domain, and those who falter, who succumb to the darkness, are lost forever. Now, as we neared the cave's entrance, a gaping maw of darkness hidden amidst a circle of ancient moss-covered stones, the whispers intensified, their voices a cacophony of warnings and threats, their presence a palpable weight that pressed down on us, suffocating us with a fear that seemed to emanate from the very earth itself. Turn back. He awaits. He hungers. I glanced at Calder, his face pale but resolute, his eyes gleaming with a mix of fear and an insatiable curiosity, his hand resting on the hilt of a silver dagger that hung at his side, its blade gleaming in the dim light. And then I looked at Izzy, her face ashen, her hands trembling, her crucifix clutched tightly in her fist, her fear a mirror reflecting my own. We had come too far to turn back. The map, Lucian's diary, the whispers in the wind, the darkness that pulsed within the cave, it all beckoned us forward, towards a destiny we couldn't escape, towards a confrontation with a power that promised both enlightenment and annihilation. The air grew heavy as we crossed the threshold of the cave, the scent of damp earth and decay washing over us like a wave. My flashlight beam danced across the uneven walls, revealing a narrow passage that twisted and turned, its darkness a palpable presence, a suffocating weight. The whispers, now a constant murmur in my mind, seemed to emanate from the very stones, their voices a dissonant chorus of warnings and beckoning calls. Turn back. He awaits. The guardian. He hungers. 
I gripped the map tighter, its parchment cold against my palm, the symbols pulsing with an eerie luminescence in the darkness. Calder, his silver dagger gleaming in the beam of his flashlight, strode ahead, his footsteps echoing through the narrow passage, his gaze fixed on the unseen path ahead. Izzy trailed behind me, her breath catching in her throat, the silver crucifix clutched tightly in her hand, its presence a meager comfort against the growing sense of dread that permeated the cave. This... this feels wrong, Nathan, she whispered her voice a shaky tremor against the backdrop of the whispers. We should turn back. But Calder, his ambition a driving force that eclipsed any fear, scoffed at her warning. There's no turning back now, Isabella, he said, his voice a low, sharp command. We're close. I can feel it. He stopped abruptly, his flashlight beam illuminating a section of the cave wall that seemed to shimmer and distort as if the very air around it vibrated with an unseen energy. A ward, Calder whispered, his eyes gleaming with a mix of fear and fascination. An ancient barrier. Lucian must have placed it here, to protect the cave's secrets. He traced the symbol etched into the stone, a spiral, its lines converging towards a central point, a vortex of energy that pulsed with a cold blue light. It feeds on fear, he said, his voice a hushed murmur. On doubt, on weakness. It tests those who seek to pass. He turned towards Izzy, his smile a predator's grin. Let's see if your faith is strong enough, Isabella. He pushed her forward, her body stumbling, her crucifix swinging wildly against her chest, her fear a palpable presence that seemed to feed the spiral's pulsing energy. The air crackled, the whispers intensified, their voices a chorus of screams and snarls, the metallic scent of blood thick and cloying. And then, the shadows moved. They surged from the walls, coalescing into grotesque shapes, their limbs elongated and twisted, their eyes burning with a cold blue fire. They were the embodiment of fear, the manifestations of our deepest anxieties, our hidden nightmares. They lunged at Izzy, their claws raking, their teeth bared, their hunger a palpable force that threatened to consume her whole. I acted instinctively, pushing her aside, taking the brunt of their attack. Pain, sharp and searing, ripped through my arm as claws tore into my flesh. I stumbled back, my vision blurring, the metallic tang of blood filling my mouth. Calder, his eyes gleaming with a chilling detachment, watched the scene unfold his hand resting on his dagger's hilt, his smile widening as the shadows swirled around us, their fury a symphony of chaos that echoed through the cavern. And then, as suddenly as they had appeared, the shadows retreated, dissolving back into the darkness, their whispers fading, the air clearing, the scent of blood mingling with the lavender and decay, a reminder of the danger, the price, of seeking forbidden knowledge. Izzy, her face ashen, her eyes wide with terror, clutched at her crucifix, her breath coming in ragged gasps. Calder, his smile fading, his gaze fixed on the pulsing spiral, his voice a low, menacing growl, said, The Guardian is testing us, Nathan. It's watching, waiting. And if we falter, if we show fear, it will consume us all. He stepped towards the spiral, his dagger gleaming in the dim light a challenge to the darkness, a declaration of his own insatiable ambition. But I, I will not be deterred, he hissed, his voice a venomous whisper. I will have the relic. I will claim its power, no matter the cost. The air crackled as Calder approached the spiral carved into the cave wall, his silver dagger a defiant glint in the dim light. The whispers, a cacophony of warning and allure swirled around him, their voices a symphony of the cave's ancient power. I watched, my arm throbbing with a dull ache where the creature's claws had raked my flesh, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked within these depths. Izzy, her face still ashen, clutched her crucifix, her eyes darting nervously from Calder to the swirling shadows that danced at the edge of our vision. Calder pressed his palm against the cold stone the spiral pulsing beneath his touch, its blue light intensifying, 
casting long shadows that stretched and contorted, transforming the familiar contours of the cave into a nightmarish landscape. I'm not afraid of you, he hissed, his voice a challenge to the unseen forces that hummed within the rock. I will not be deterred. He closed his eyes, his face contorted in concentration, his body trembling as if battling an unseen force. The air grew thick with the scent of lavender and decay, the metallic tang of blood stinging my nostrils. The whispers intensified, their voices a chorus of screams and snarls, their energy a palpable weight that pressed down on us, suffocating, disorienting. And then, silence. The spiral's glow faded, the whispers retreated, the air cleared. Calder, his face now pale and beaded with sweat, lowered his hand, his gaze fixed on the space beyond the ward, his eyes gleaming with a triumphant madness. The path is open, he whispered, his voice hoarse. The guardian has deemed me worthy. He turned towards me, his smile a predator's grin. Come, Nathan, he beckoned. Let us claim what is rightfully ours. He strode past the ward, his footsteps echoing in the sudden silence, his shadow stretching and contorting along the cave wall, as if mocking the fears that still clung to Izzy and me. We followed him, the path ahead illuminated by his flashlight beam, the whispers a constant murmur in our minds, a reminder of the dangers that lurked within these depths. The air grew colder, the scent of decay intensifying, the cave walls closing in on us, a claustrophobic embrace that mirrored the growing dread in my heart. We descended deeper, the path twisting and turning, leading us through a labyrinth of tunnels and chambers, each one filled with remnants of Lucian's journey, discarded torches, broken tools, and the scattered pages of his journal. Their ink faded, their words a haunting testament to the horrors he had faced. The cave, it twists the mind, Lucian had written. It plays tricks on your senses, blurs the lines between reality and nightmare. I see things, hear things, that cannot be real. But the fear, the fear is all too real. And as we ventured deeper into the heart of the cave, I understood the truth of Lucian's words. The air shimmered, the shadows danced, the whispers intensified, weaving a tapestry of fear and illusion that threatened to unravel my sanity. We stumbled upon a cavern, its vastness echoing the emptiness within my own soul. The air here was thick with the metallic tang of blood, the scent of lavender so overpowering it made my eyes water. The cave walls pulsed with a faint blue light, their surfaces etched with archaic symbols that seemed to writhe and contort as we watched. And in the center of the cavern, suspended in midair, a swirling vortex of energy crackled and hummed, its presence a palpable force that drew my gaze, beckoned me closer. The heart of the cave, Calder whispered, his voice a mix of awe and fear. The source of its power, the gateway, to another realm. He stepped towards the vortex, his eyes gleaming with a manic intensity, his dagger raised as if to challenge the unseen forces that swirled within its depths. But I, remembering Lucian's warnings, his pleas for caution, his desperate attempts to seal the gateway, knew that Calder was blinded by ambition, that his thirst for knowledge had twisted into a dangerous obsession, a hunger that would consume him, just as it had consumed countless others before him. Calder, wait! I shouted, my voice a desperate plea against the whispers that now urged him onward towards the abyss. This is madness. We don't know what lies beyond that gateway. But Calder, his gaze fixed on the swirling vortex, his smile a chilling mask of determination, ignored my warning. He stepped into the heart of the cave, his body swallowed by the energy, his laughter a final mocking echo that reverberated through the cavern, a testament to the seductive power of the unknown, the allure of a darkness that promised both enlightenment and annihilation. The silence that followed Calder's disappearance was deafening, a vacuum of sound that amplified the whispers swirling in my mind, the hum of the vortex pulsing before us. The air thrummed with an energy that made my skin crawl, the scent of lavender and decay thick and cloying. Izzy, her face ashen, 
her crucifix clutched so tightly her knuckles were white, whispered, He's gone. What have we done, Nathan? Regret, a bitter taste in my mouth, mirrored the metallic tang in the air. Calder's ambition, his relentless pursuit of the cave's secrets had consumed him, lured him into the abyss. And I, blinded by my own curiosity, my need to prove myself, had led us both to this precipice. The vortex pulsed, its blue light casting long, distorted shadows that danced across the cavern walls. The archaic symbols, etched into the stone centuries ago, seemed to writhe and contort, as if mocking our fear, our helplessness. We have to get out of here, Izzy, I said, my voice a shaky whisper against the hum of the vortex. This place, it's not meant for us. But even as I spoke, I knew escape might be impossible. Lucian's journal, its pages filled with frantic warnings and desperate pleas, offered no guidance, no solution, to the labyrinth he had stumbled into, the darkness he had unwittingly unleashed. The Guardian, it controls the cave, he had written, his words a chilling prophecy. It shifts the paths, alters the very fabric of reality. There is no escape, not for those who have tasted its power, who have looked into its eyes. The whispers, a cacophony of voices, echoed Lucien's warning, their murmurs a symphony of dread. He is the gatekeeper. He is the judge. He is the end. The cavern trembled, the air crackling, the blue light intensifying, the vortex now a swirling maelstrom of energy that threatened to consume us. And then it spoke. The guardian's voice, a resonant rumble that seemed to emanate from the very depths of the earth, a chorus of whispers and roars, a symphony of ancient power, reverberated through the cavern, its words a chilling judgment. You have trespassed. You have sought forbidden knowledge. You have unleashed the darkness. Terror, a cold, paralyzing grip, tightened around my heart. I glanced at Izzy, her face pale, her eyes wide with a fear that mirrored my own her crucifix a glimmer of silver against the encroaching darkness. We were trapped, caught in a web of our own making, our curiosity, our ambition, our thirst for adventure, leading us to this moment of reckoning, this confrontation with a power that dwarfed our understanding, that mocked our mortality. There is only one path left to you, the Guardian's voice boomed, its echoes swirling around us, its power a tangible force that pressed down on us a weight that threatened to crush our souls. The path of oblivion. The vortex pulsed, its blue light intensifying, its energy reaching out, grasping, pulling us towards the abyss. Izzy screamed, her voice a raw, primal sound that echoed through the cavern, a testament to the human spirit's resilience, its defiance in the face of annihilation. But her scream was also a trigger, a spark that ignited a primal instinct within me, a survival instinct honed by years of facing danger. A detective's intuition that whispered a final, desperate plan. The map, Izzy, I shouted, my voice a command against the deafening roar of the vortex. Lucian's map. It's a guide, not just to the cave, but out of it. I fumbled in my satchel, the parchment crackling, its symbols glowing with a desperate urgency. There has to be a way out, I muttered, my fingers tracing the map's intricate lines my mind racing, searching for a pattern, a clue, a path to escape the Guardian's wrath. Izzy, her fear giving way to a flicker of hope, huddled beside me, her flashlight beam illuminating the map, her eyes scanning its cryptic symbols, her voice a prayer. Please, Nathan, find it. Find a way out. The vortex pulsed, its energy pulling at us, the air crackling, the cave walls trembling. Time, a river that had flowed steadily for centuries now seemed to be swirling, accelerating, rushing towards a precipice. And then I saw it, a symbol, a small, almost insignificant circle hidden amongst the map's labyrinth of lines and curves, a symbol Lucian had mentioned in his diary, a symbol he had described as a breach point, a weak spot in the cave's structure, a point where the veil between realms was thinnest. This way, Izzy, I shouted my voice a beacon of hope against the vortex's roar. This is our only chance. I grabbed her hand, her fingers icy cold, her grip surprisingly strong. 
and with a desperate prayer, I plunged into the darkness, following the map's path, leading us away from the vortex, away from the Guardian's wrath, towards a glimmer of light, a whisper of freedom. The cave seemed to fight back against our escape, its tunnels twisting and turning, its shadows reaching out like grasping claws, its whispers a chorus of mockery and despair. But I pressed onward, the map my guide, Izzy's hand a lifeline, our footsteps a frantic rhythm against the heartbeat of doom that echoed through the cavern. And then, we saw it. A shaft of sunlight, a beacon of hope, piercing the darkness ahead. We stumbled towards it, our breath ragged, our limbs trembling, the whispers fading, the metallic scent dissipating, the air growing lighter, fresher, with each step closer to the surface, closer to the world we knew. We emerged from the cave into the blinding light of day, gasping for breath, the forest around us a symphony of color and sound, a stark contrast to the oppressive darkness we had just escaped. The rain had stopped, the sky a brilliant blue canvas, the air clean and sweet. The cave entrance, its mouth a gaping maw of shadow, seemed to shrink behind us, its whispers fading into the rustle of leaves and the chirping of birds, its presence a distant echo in the symphony of life that now surrounded us. We collapsed onto the soft earth, our bodies trembling, our minds still reeling from the horrors we had witnessed, the darkness we had encountered, the knowledge that had shattered our perceptions of the world, of ourselves. And as I lay there, the sun warm on my face, Izzy's hand still clasped in mine, I realized that we had escaped the cave, but its secrets, its whispers, its chilling truths would forever linger in the shadows of our minds, a haunting reminder of the fragility of reality, the allure of the unknown, the price of curiosity, the burden of knowledge, the eternal dance between light and darkness.